I love sunbeams and I have all my life, especially the tiger and the alpine. I thought it would be fun today to show you sunbeams from mild to wild. Down here on the end is a 1967 sunbeam alpine. It's completely stock, but it is the last version of the alpine, so it has the most power. In the middle here is a Sunbeam Tiger that is completely stock with the original 260 V8. And on the end here is a Tiger that is at the extreme. This car has had all of the proper modifications and yet on the outside and the inside it still looks standard. When you're going down the highway it's great to have the power and the gearing of the Tigers. But in parking lots and lower speed the Alpine is much more maneuverable. I would say that if you live in the city an Alpine is probably a better choice for you. But if you need to conquer longer distances, the Tiger is the one that you want. The engine will be less high strung at high speeds. So I'm gonna take all three of these cars, throw them on the dyno, and we'll see how they differ in horsepower. The first car up, and the one that should have the least amount of power, is this 1967 Sunbeam Alpine. Under the bonnet, this car is powered by a 1725cc inline four cylinder. I have upgraded this car with a Weber carburetor. So it might make a little bit more than a standard car, but I haven't done any tuning to this. So I guess you'll see what happens at the same time I do. Okay, let's take a look at the results. You can see that the Alpine made about 50 horsepower at around 5,000 RPM. This is pretty consistent with other times that I have dynoed this car. Next up, we have a 1964 Sunbeam Tiger. This Tiger has its original 260 cubic inch V8 engine. You saw me get this car running in a previous video. I did put a new carburetor on it, but I haven't done any other work to it since you saw that video. Let's see how it runs, and this will be a good baseline for any improvements we make later. Okay, let's take a look at how the Tiger performed. The Tiger had about 74 horsepower at around 4,350 RPM. This is not quite double the horsepower of the Alpine, but it is a great improvement. You can see how horsepower increases till about 3,600 RPM, and then it doesn't really get any greater than that. So there's a lot of improvement that could be made there. Uh, these stock 260 V8s and these Tigers only had a two barrel carburetor. It'd be very easy to swap out for a four barrel intake manifold and change the carburetor on this engine. Also, all of these little squiggly spots in the graph may indicate that there's an ignition problem with the car, which would make sense because the car sat for a long time and I haven't gone through it yet. Next up is the Wild 1966 Tiger. Underneath the bonnet of this car is a 347 cubic inch. Ford V8. Being just a bolt-in swap from the original 260 cubic inch V8, this is a common engine swap for those looking for high horsepower in a Tiger. Okay, now let's take a look at the Tiger with the 347. Click pause now and tell me what your guess on how much power that Tiger makes below before you watch this next section. Okay, here we go. You can see this run, the Tiger made 352 horsepower at around 5,550 RPMs. This is over three times the horsepower of the other cars. So driving this car would be a considerably different experience from driving either of the other Sunbeams. This just goes to show what you can do with a Tiger, but still keep it looking correct. I know that the car has different wheels on it. That's almost a necessity. With this much power, you need to upgrade the brakes and the big brakes don't fit under the stock wheels, unfortunately. So you do have to change the wheels if you want to have the braking to go with the performance of the engine when you're at this much horsepower. For some bonus content, here's another Tiger that I'm working on right now. 
This area had previously been cut out. It was all rusty. You'll be able to see on the other side what the rocker panel over there looks like, but this has all had to been rebuilt. There's basically three layers of metal inside here. There's an outer rocker, an inner rocker, and then a structure on the other side of that. Around the back, you can see some repairs that have been made a long time ago. This is uh, some body shop had brazed in panels that they had handmade. I'm sure before the internet, it was about impossible to find parts for these, especially here. It's still pretty hard to find this rear valence panel though. On the underside of the trunk, you can see how rusty it is down here. Just thousands and thousands of pinholes. The rocker panel on this side gives you a good idea of what it looked like on the other side before rebuilding it. And underneath the car, the exhaust cutouts had to be re-welded. This is a patch that's available. You can get, order these cutouts and replace yours. Of course, with the exhaust there, these always rust out. Well, that's it for today. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.